My name is Gregory Everett. I'm an activist filmmaker with Ultra Wave Media. And today we're here at the, we're in the new ninth at the, um, at the Central Avenue Jazz Festival. And we're at the Arts Pavilion where we're having a demonstration showing a monument that we're going to be building with the Zapata King Neighborhood Council, with the South Central Neighborhood Council, the 9th District, and also Trade Tech College. So the students at Trade Tech in the architecture program had an assignment to use me as a client and for them to come up with a Black Panther monument based on watching the film and doing research on the Southern California chapter of the Black Panther Party for Self-Defense. So today we're showing the public the model of the monument for the first time. And we're going to screen publicly for the first time. We've been screening the first 25 minutes of my new project that Ultra Wave Media is working on along with StreetGangs.com about the history of the Southern California chapter of the Black Panther Party. A longer version of 41st and Central, like a six to eight part series. Well, they'll learn that right across the street, you can't see through there, but you see that roof over there. That's where the assault happened December 8th, 1969, where the Panther headquarters was assaulted by the newly formed SWAT. This was their first real get down and uh, versus 11 Panthers, nine men and two women. They immediately tore down the building. We believe that the reason why it was torn down because it represented so much, such a uh, strong stand against the establishment by the community. So they tore the building down. They said it was because of structural damage, but if you look at the location, the both buildings that were attached to that building, literally, are still standing up. And if you look in the original footage, they're attached to that building. So what structural damage did that building get that the other two buildings didn't get when they were all being shot at from this building right here? I was being one of the persons that were on the, on the roof at the time. There were a lot of we had fellas on different floors on watch. And uh, there was a dog barking on my right side to the back. Went back there, couldn't see it, but notified the fellas inside that I'm hearing the dogs barking consistently. Then it occurred again about 20, 15 minutes later on the left side. The same thing, went back there, investigated, looking it over, trying to see what I could see. I couldn't see nothing in the dark, tree blocking out the street area, but the dog kept on uh, constantly barking. And uh, I went back again and let the brothers know, man, come on, man, look, there's something strange going on, but I'm not seeing no one. I stand by the back wall, I'm scoping the alley out. I'm doing all of that. Do what you do on watch, letting them on alert. They're telling me, just keep your eye open, Gil. Just keep everything peeled and everything. I said, well, we're doing that, man, but this is strange, these dogs barking. It turns out that uh, after a while, I hear a noise on the roof next door. And I went and let him know again. I say, man, this heard some metal, some metal, or something like a metal sound. I was making this sound, but like, we whispering, we calling down to each other. And I held the gun. I grabbed the gun. I had already had the gun in my hand. I cocked the gun and held the gun towards that position where I heard the noise coming from, and kept my hand trained on it for quite a long time, looking through the scope of it, everything. I'm ready to bust off some rounds. Any other noise, anything coming out of here, and I held that for about. It felt like about three minutes at least, if not longer, but it felt like much longer than that. I kept that position, I'm squatted like this. So what occurs after that is that I, I walk, I hear the dogs barking again on my left side in the far corner of the building. So it distracted me from all that that had happened here and I started going back towards there. On my way back there, I switched gun to the left hand because I've been holding up so long on my right hand. And so I switched hand and when I turned and I'm, I'm, I'm going towards that area, I heard another noise, and what happened? It flew through the roof on the on the uh, on the adjacent building next door, across on the other building that's adjoining us. They broke out. These all I saw was pigs, like crazy. You know, everybody dressed in black. And they, you know, I've seen the metro like that dressed like that. It seemed like riding around their car, scoping our offices out. But this time, here they are, baseball caps, all this stuff, and I can see the guns. You can see like M16s. You know, you like uh, M, M uh, you know, but but these are. Uh, all I'm seeing is the weapons. I'm seeing the weapons and a figure and a bunch of people, a bunch of pigs is floating up on the roof on me. Got the drop on me. I'm turning back around like this. And uh, I'm like caught. And I just, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't get the gun in front of me to do anything. So he was telling me a lot of orders. I obeyed them. Meanwhile, I'm also shouting. I threw the gun down hard, making make noise. And I start stomping my feet and screaming at my comrade that 
that the pigs are here, the police, police, police. And I start stomping my feet, figuring I'm going to hear bullets. Bullets going to be flying through me any second. I figure this shit. Let me be the last righteous thing that I'm supposed to be doing. This is why I joined the Black Panther Party here, to join the revolution to fight for my people. But that you thought you were going to get shot at that moment? Oh, yeah, of course. I thought. I just knew it for a fact. Not that moment any other time after that. I thought it was any time. They had guns in my head later on, shooting shotguns off right by my ear. You know, and uh, all kind of other things occurred. So did you I, was there. I, was there, I was there for hours. They were beyond fear. You get to a certain level with fear where you're just not afraid anymore. And the whole thing is, well, this is what we signed up for. Keep in mind that Fred Hampton had just been murdered a few days earlier, and that they didn't only raid 41st and Central. They raided 41st and Central, they raided another community office, and they raided Geronimo Pratt's apartment. The whole purpose of the raid was to find some illegal guns to somehow pin a murder on the leadership, Geronimo Pratt. Five and a half hours later, they were getting us all out, you know, I guess, and um, then we all got, I got thrown in the hole. We, me, Robert Bryan, Will Stafford. I didn't notice till later on, I'm finding later, but we got straight straight to the hole, stripped down and stripped straight to the hole. I was in the hole for days and days, butt naked, freezing temperature, and so was the other brothers too, and Roland Freeman had been shot since the time he had been shot, you know, and everyone had been, went through significant, significant, you know, injury in some form or fashion, you know what I mean? But they were fighting back. That's the thing about it. We're going down, we're dying fighting, man, going down fighting. That's what it's about. Eventually, with this whole fact of the Mac coming with a warrant and everything like that to get to the bottom line, is that it null and voided the whole case that they held against us. They came in just rampantly just trying to just attack us without um, the legal ne uh, document necessary to do that type of shit. This was a bold move to come in and try to kill us all. And that Johnny Cochran is my attorney. Is that right? Yeah, a young, young man. His root is knowing the law as he did, and the way he did, he p was on point. And every word, every sentence he said in my case had strong effect. And before we knew it, we were headed towards the road of acquittal. From corporate, corporate greed to uh, where there is no kind of consideration for the people and the majority of people in this country who are just about the finances and the funds that fill their pocket and make their economy thicker, thicker and richer, their economy, I'll say, while we're being denied situations in jobs and in housing and in education and in all other factors and stuff like that. There's hungriness, hunger going on here. There's, uh, the homeless thing has become worse. All these things show for itself. In this greatest country, in this great country, these are things that are occurring and multiplying and it's constantly uh, need to be addressed. And all I say is for those young people to keep on fighting, keep on striving, don't give up. To know that the community has not forgotten and that they are working diligently to put up a monument so that the legacy of the Southern California chapter of the Black Panther Party for Self-Defense, as started by Bunchy Carter and under the leadership of Geronimo Pratt and all the other Panthers, is never forgotten. Thanks for watching StreetGangs.com. Please like and share the video you just watched and leave a comment below to tell us what you think. You can also watch two of our previous episodes to the right. Please visit the link to our Patreon page and support our campaign. And don't forget to subscribe.